Welcome. There you go. Welcome back, Raider fans. They've taken the time off the clock, and they have put eight minutes on board as we get ready to start the third quarter. Joe Ryan along with Lloyd Kirby and LT working the camera over here. Haley Williams to inbound, and she gets it to Froby. We're underway. Second half action. Let's go. Let's stay out of foul trouble. Let's go, Railers. This is Morgan. She drives in the paint. Up, no good. Nice board by Boss again. Gets it back to her. Morgan goes up, rolls around, goes down. They're going to call a block, and she's going to get the end one. Nice job. Aggressive. I'll tell you what. Morgan went right up into the paint. Aggressive. And I did she get the, uh, was it 44 or 43? 40, 43, okay. Yeah. The foul's going to be called on Bria Barr. I was kind of hoping it was on Shelby Myers, but Morgan gets it. She goes to the free throw line. First one up, off, no good. The ball's batted around, looked around for, and here comes Fear Day. She gets it over to Fox. Fox crosses half court. This is Fear Day. She looks around out front, back over to Fox. Almost lost it. Now she brings it down in the corner. They go cross court pass. Move, oh, they go in the paint. Good defense, I'll tell you that, in the paint to Shelby Myers. Good defense by Boston, and Myers still turns around, puts it in. We're tied at 32. 7.15 remaining in the third quarter. And we want to welcome back our listeners that are now listening on the FM station. We are streaming both the boys' game and the girls' game online and switching back and forth, but uh, we are back on the FM signal now. Lady Railers are tied with Effingham, 32-32. Seven minutes left in the third quarter. Turnover by ball bounces off Frodi's ankles. Fox gets it, goes the length of the way. She, oh, stay off of her. Oh, I'll tell you what. Frodi couldn't do anything to her. She's going to pick up her third foul. So she had to let her shoot. I thought she would get called for over the back, but she didn't. 34-32 to Flaming Hearts lead. This is Frobie out front, right in front of the Raider bench. Comes to center court. Gives it to Kennedy. He goes to Williams. Williams drives in the lane. Nice pass to Boss again. One go. Ah. Rebound down, big rebound that time by Armstrong. She gets it. This is Fox. Hey, Fox brings the ball up quickly, goes all the way down for a layup, misses it. Hey, I'll tell you what, that's a rebound for Boston here and an over the back call on Shelby Myers. That'll be her third on the 6 1 junior. Yeah, the, uh, we're only a minute and a half into the third quarter, but uh, it's definitely a good start for Lincoln, even though they're trailing on the scoreboard at this point. Defensively, they're doing a better job of. Uh, so far, not picking up the fouls. Offensively, they're moving the ball better and uh, getting some clear shots. So hopefully that will bode where, well the rest of the game here. This is Williams out front. She looks just down in the paint. Nice pass. Tipped away. Throw mm. had it. Oh, stolen back and forth a couple of times. Ends up in the hands of Bria Barr. They bring it on down, and that's a shot that, oh, I was just going to say. Carson <laughs> Fury shot one from the bench, missed everything, it went out of bounds. I thought they were going to save it, but they don't. Yeah, Bria Barr with a great hustle. She uh, ran under the basket, tried to leap out of bounds and save it back in, but so, her last step was out of bounds, so the ball will go to the Lady Railers. So Shelly Myers is going to sit down. And She's it's picked up her third foul, and Coach Richmond immediately brings Schneider into the game. Yep, so a little pick on that. little chess match as the 6-1 player for Effingham takes nice a seat. Job. Nice job, 6-1 player Richmond. for Lincoln uh, immediately on the floor. Look for Lincoln to go inside to her. There she goes. Oh! Threw it away. Stolen right off by Carson. Fear day. They go right over the corner to Armstrong. Armstrong hits a three. Wow. And they extend the lead. 37 32 Flaming Hearts. And the crowd's all back in it. Just a quick little turnover like that. She hit a three, and all of a sudden we're down five. The Raiders go to the middle. Boss again fakes. They knock it away from her. They're on the ground. It's all held up. Jump ball. And it's going to go to the Flaming Hearts. I don't think we've got a jump ball all day. Well, the quarter began with uh, Lincoln having possession, so alternate possession goes to Effingham. It's just interesting, though, that reach-in play that caused the jump ball uh, by oh, Effingham. No. That's the same thing that Lincoln was called for fouls for in the first half. Hearts out front. Now they move it around. Back out front. This is Fear Day. This is Fox. She looks around. It's down the corner. They're going to let Armstrong shoot another one. And she hits it. Wow, Allie Armstrong. The 5'7 junior bombs a three. It's 40 32 Flaming Hearts, the largest lead of the game by either team. 5 2 remaining in the third quarter. And we're going to take a small break, 30 second timeout. We'll be right back. All athletes at risk for sports related concussions are encouraged to participate in the free impact concussion management program at Abraham Lincoln Memorial Hospital. 
The IMPACT program is a research-based, scientifically proven method of concussion management that allows an athlete to return to competition safely and in a timely manner after they sustain a concussion. Call Memorial Sports Care at Abraham Lincoln Memorial Hospital at 217-605-5500 for more information about this free program. Welcome back, Lady Raider fans. Tell you what, we had a little uh, explosion there from the Flaming Hearts in the five minutes remaining in the third quarter. The Lady Raiders trail 40-32. We need some offense. They go inside Schneider. She turns and passes over to Bossingham. Back out front to Morgan. Morgan tries to drive. Back to Bossingham. Bossingham turns and tries to go to the hoop. I don't know what they're going to call. Foul? Looks like she was, uh, yeah, her she progress was impeded there by the Effingham players. So a uh, foul on Effingham. Foul on Sydney Webster. And we go to inbound, we go way back out front to Froby. Froby bombs the three, off, no good. Schneider, big board, go right back up. Schneider, back up, good. 40-34, 4.35 remaining in the third quarter. It's a big basket, nice job by Schneider. Yeah, absolutely. The heart's down quickly now, they go inside. Wow, nice job by Schneider. I think she deflected that ball a little bit. Bria Barr had a layup. Schneider, good defense. Kennedy crosses the, court, the uh, half court line, gets to Morgan. Here's Froby, she's open, she's gonna drive in the paint. There's the scoop, good. 40-36, they just made us mad. Here we go, 4-5 remaining in the third quarter. Lady Raiders trail by four, here's the pressure defense. The Hearts haven't had much trouble with it. We can't be aggressive. And now they get it down, sets up that, that's aggressive there by Kennedy, they don't get it. There's the open look, wow! Carson Kennedy hits a three. And now, we're gonna have a 30 second timeout, I believe, did Coach Richmond call it? I believe no. she did. No. Yo, I'll tell you what, I believe the Flaming Hearts call it. We're gonna keep it right here. 43-36, Lady Raiders Trail. It's the time for us to throw some thank yous out, connect construction, new builds, roofs, additions, kitchens, you name it, cross all the T's, dot all the I's, and then connect all the dots when it comes to your building projects. Call Connect Construction. 671-1965. The Lincoln Holiday Inn Express, located out on Lincoln's west side. Great rates with a delicious hot breakfast included. 735-5800. And uh, one more out there for Abraham Lincoln Memorial Hospital and Memorial Sports Care. Out at 200 Stall Hut Drive in Lincoln. 732-2161. 350 remaining in the third quarter. The Lady Raiders trail 43-36. And they have the ball. We're working some offense right now. This is Williams. Over to Kennedy, they go in the corner to Morgan. Morgan fakes, now drives in the paint, goes up, off the iron, gets her own rebound, loses the ball. There's never a foul on the hearts. Here we go the other direction. They set it up, Fox gets it over here to Carson. Oh, nice job. Mm. Wow, the ball's loose, Fox gets it back, drives out. Now they go out on the corner. Oh my gosh, she's open again and she hits it. That's number 22, Allie Armstrong's open for the three. And I'll tell you what, the hearts are opening up on us. They lead by 10, 46. 36, inside Schneider. Schneider turns, goes to the hoop, it goes down. Nice move, we can't get an end one out of that. Three minutes remaining in the third quarter. Lincoln trails 46-38. Here come the hearts, they bring it up. They cross half court. Bounce inside, this is Fox. Fox goes over in the corner. Oh. Gosh, that's Sydney Webster bombs a three, and I'm gonna tell you what, they are shooting lights out from three point land. Lights out. Yeah, the last, uh, let me look at the score here. One, 49, two, three. 38. The last five scores by Effingham have all come by, by way of the three-pointer. 2.45 remaining in the third quarter. And the hearts have caught fire. That's why they call them the Flaming Hearts. They run the ball around. This is Froby out front. She moves, bounces inside Schneider. Schneider turns, goes up. No foul ever inside. And that ball's batted away, controlled by the hearts, and they want to run. Here comes Fear Day. Fear Day all the way in the paint, loses it. Oh, sure, it's a foul. Sure. Fear Day loses it in the paint. The ball bounces out of bounds. I believe they're going to call Boss. No, they're going to call Schneider for the foul. And uh, they're going to have it out of bounds. I just say I almost yeah, have to shoot it. 49-38, they're going to inbound. They go over inside to Fox. Fox goes right back in the corner. To Armstrong. Wow, that's batted away, taken away now by Bossingham. Yep, good hands by Snyder. Chipping the ball away. Lincoln with a chance to cut into the lead. Snyder wants the ball down low. 
Trying to get it through, they can't. This is Froby, we need some three action. We need to get hot here. Two minutes remaining in the third quarter. We're deep in the corner over here. Picks up a drill, now they bounce pass inside, ball almost lost. This is Bossingham, up, rolls around, won't go. Ball's batted around, rebound down to Webster. Stolen, oh good, and they finally got a foul call. That ball was stolen. Nice job, oh, and she, uh, by Kennedy Lawling, she mm -hmm. stole it. Got the ball up underneath for a layup. She gets the foul. That's on 24, that's on Miranda Fox. It's her second foul. And it's gonna send Miss Lawling to the free throw line. It looks like maybe she landed on the other player's foot there or something. She kind of walked a little gingerly to the free throw line. But uh, I'm sure she will not come out here. No, she's not going anywhere. She squats. Ball up. Good. 49-39. Later it is trailed by 10. Bossingham's going to sit down. Take a little break. And I believe that Morgan came back in. Kinney at the line. For her second one, spins it around, squats, up, and good. 49-40, Raiders trail by nine, 149 remaining. Here comes the pressure by the Raiders, and the, I'll tell you what, the Hearts have had no trouble with it today. They bring it across, they get it across court. I, hmm, I thought, ah, uh, she didn't, I thought Fear Child, Fear Day, Fear Child, I thought Fear Day traveled, she didn't. They move it around, they go over on the side now. They look, they cross court pass to Armstrong. She dumps inside. They're going to come back outside. That's Schaefer. Now back outside. The field day. Fox. They're yeah. working some clock right here. Yeah. Coach Schaefer's up over on the side. They bounce. They go in the corner. Is she open again? Off no good. We have to have that rebound. We don't get it. We don't get it. I tell you what, Carl shot up a big three. We've got to get those rebounds. It's got to be an offensive foul there. <laughs> Somewhere. They cross court over here to Schaefer. Schaefer goes back to Fox. They go in the corner. Now back out front to Schaefer. Now over in the corner is Armstrong. I think she traveled. No call to Fox. They go deep in the corner. Here comes Carl again. She hits another three. And it is 52 to 40. Flaming Hearts. And they, they are on fire. Raiders out front. They dump inside Snyder. She turns, goes to the hoop, won't go. Rebound Morgan. Back up. No good. Rebound Snyder. Back up and good. Nice battle on the boards, 52-42. Raiders trail by 10. Hearts inbound. Oh my gosh, she got up. Mm. Froby jumps in the air and Fox just stands still. Froby lands on her and she's gonna have her third foul. She made it through about the whole quarter though without one, so yeah. the pitch went up with 23 seconds to go. We need the turnover. 23.2 seconds remaining in the third quarter. The Lady Raiders trail by 10. The Hearts inbound under their own basket. Here they go, moving the ball. This is a pretty good basketball team. Now it's deep in the corner. Now they go to the middle. Now they cross over here. They cross half court. 10 seconds remaining in the third quarter. Hearts out front. This is Fox. She looks around. She drives right down in the paint. Gets it off to Armstrong. Armstrong from the bench won't go. Rebound. Nice rebound there by Morgan Lawling. And that is going to end the third quarter, and the Lady Raiders did not have a good third quarter. They went into the third quarter tied at 30, and they now throw 50 Raiders Raiders sponsor. When you need the best, it's got to be Lincoln Heating and Cooling, 735-5835. Another thank you out there also to Logan County Sheriff Steve Nichols and his deputies out there protecting us every day in the streets of Logan County. The Raiders, Lady Raiders inbound. This is Froby. Froby looks around. Gets the ball over here on the side. Officials in my way. Froby bombs from the three. Won't go. Rebound to Kennedy. She steps backwards so she can pop up a three. And it goes. That's huge. 52-45. Let's go, Raiders. The press hasn't been real effective. We can't be as aggressive. We are in the press. They go to the middle. Almost tipped. Didn't get it. This is Fox. She goes in the corner. They mm -hmm. hold it up. And there's an open lane. Oh, good defense. No call. She got her own board. Gosh. Carson Fairday went right up, missed the layup, got her own board, went right back up again and scores. That was big. We, should, we needed that ball back. Yeah. 54-45, Raiders trail by nine. This is Froby out front, looking to run the offense. The Raiders aren't in a panic yet. We sure could use the threes or some and ones or something. Here we go. They want to move the ball around. Lolling to Williams to Froby. 
Roby goes right in the lane, up off the glass and good. Nice drive, she took care of it herself. 54, 47, 6, 50 remaining. We just can't get that. Oh, are you kidding? She traveled. I thought they were going to call Roby for the foul, but she traveled. Fox travels with the basketball. That's going to give the ball back to the Raiders. 54-47. Uh, Kenny's going to take the ball out right in front of the Raider bench. And she goes to block. Block back to Kennedy. Kenny rolls it around to this side in the corner of the system. They try to jump inside. The ball is stolen away. And a nice defensive play down there by Armstrong. Oh. Now they're going to call Morgan with the foul. Morgan playing good aggressive defense. They're going to call her the foul. I believe that'll be her. Don't. I think it's her third. But yeah, it's yeah, first her on the first. board. First up there on the board. And uh, what are we doing? We're going to have a 30-second timeout. I don't know who called it. We're going to keep it right here. 30-second timeout called by the Flaming Hearts bench. I think he wants to grab control of this. Lincoln trails by 7. 54-47 with 6.41 remaining. I'd like to throw uh, thank yous out there. Chicago Street Rentals. Located out on North Kickapoo Street, specializing in contractors' equipment and renting just about everything but the kitchen sink. And ask about the full line of rent owned storage sheds and their monthly storage facility, 735 2422. Thank you out to Community Action Partnership. They're helping people changing lives. They are America's poverty fighting network, 732 2159. 5447, the Hearts inbound. I think uh, Coach Schaefer wanted to talk about this press. Hearts come up, they break it now. They cross half court. They dump it in the middle. Schneider should have been called for foul, was it? Nice move inside. Boy, I'll tell you what, Myers made a nice move. Couldn't get to go down. The ball bounced out of bounds, came along the way. Shelly Myers made a nice move in there. I thought really Schneider could have been called for the foul, and it wasn't. She went up and over and uh, kind of swatted at the ball, but credit Lauren Block for the hustle. She was down on the court, hustling after the loose ball. Fortunately, it went off the Effingham player. Making a chance to cut into the lead a little bit more here. Huge possession for the Raiders. Morgan fakes. Now she wants to go inside. Can't to Froby. Froby, she'll drive inside. Has to look down. Now she's back out front. This is Kennedy. She'll shoot from the Raider bench. Oh, in and out. Won't go. The ball bounces around and Myers gets the board. Gosh, that was a big, a big time, a big time down the floor. Under six minutes now. They drive. They go in the side. Wow, I'll tell you what. That is Natalie Carl. And Natalie Carl hits a three, and it's unbelievable. The lead is 10 again, 57-47, 5.40 remaining in the third. When are they going to miss a shot? Out front, this is Morgan. She goes over, alley's up inside Schneider. Schneider turns and looks, goes back outside to Morgan. In the corner, they go back inside Schneider. Schneider turns, and the ball stripped away on an excellent defensive play by Fearday. Fearday down to Fox. Fox is going to go all the way, does... She almost had the end three. It wouldn't bounce around and go down. And uh, was that Morgan that got down there in front yeah, of her? I believe it was. She got in her path uh, to draw the charge, but she just didn't stay stationary. She kind of jumped and shuffled her feet at the last second, so she got whiffled for the foul. Or actually, that was block, I guess, they called it on. Miranda Fox misses her free throw, the 5'6 sophomore. Tell you what, she's a good little ball player and a great little ball hammer. She's been in charge of this offense all day for the Flaming Hearts. And like you said, the trailer press has not really given them much trouble, so credit their guards and credit her for uh, directing traffic out there. Second free throw is good. And the Hearts extend their lead, 58-47. Redders quickly up the court, and now Kennedy slows things up. Now she wants to drive, go down the paint one-on-one. -on -one. She gets cut off. They get the ball to Williams, the queen. They go back over. This is Morgan. She drives down the lane, up, and she's going to get a foul and one. That's what we need. The push is going to be on number 12, Natalie Carl. I don't think she's in any foul trouble. So that won't help. But a nice drive and layup by Morgan Kennedy. At the 503 mark, she's going to get the and one. Did they give it to her? I haven't seen it yet. I think they're waiting just to put them all. I don't know why they didn't. 58 49. Here we go. They get it back. 58 49, 455 remaining. Good pressure defense right in front of us. Now they go cross court. That was Myers. They go down the corner. I'll tell you what, Armstrong's not afraid to shoot. That's up and no good. She's over the back. I'll tell you what, Fox gets the rebound. They go back inside and an easy layup for Carson Fearday. And that's a backbreaker right there. Yeah, absolutely. 60 to 49. 
Raiders bring it up. Froby out front, 430 remaining. She's going to have a long shot. It's going to go. We needed that. Exactly what we needed. 60 to 52. Raiders trail by eight. 420 remaining. They move the ball around. They go back over on the side. Lincoln's still in the full court pressure. They break the press once again. And now they go cross court. Now as they drive in the lane, they dump into Myers. She's going to have an easy layup. Yep. They dump it up high. She keeps it up high. She lays it up. 62 52 with four minutes remaining. The Lady Raiders trail by 10. Up front, this is Kennedy Lally. Kennedy goes inside Bossingham, drives up, no good. Tell you what, Myers did an excellent job on her, took the ball away from her. Good defense. This is Fox out front. She's going to be fouled. That's Kennedy Lally. He's going to foul her, and she did. We'll yep. give her that one. She got kind of tangled up there, but that defense uh, on the other end by Myers, that's exactly what Lincoln needs to do to combat the drives by Effingham. Myers just stood her ground, got her arms up, didn't shuffle her feet, didn't try to move into her and initiate contact. And uh, Lincoln, there was no foul called, but Lincoln missed the shot. Effingham with possession there. They bring it up. They're right in front of the Lady Hearts bench. They're double teamed over there. Stripes in the way. Can't see. They go to Myers. He finds Armstrong underneath. Armstrong puts it up and in. Wow. A great pass and a nice layup by Armstrong. Yeah, great 64 time. 52. The Hearts are playing good basketball. Let's go, Raiders. Here we go. And we're looking around. This is Morgan to Froby. Froby cuts. She's going to drive into the basket off the glass and good. Nice shot. Fox just lets her have it. She knows there's no sense in fouling her. 64 54. 305 remaining. This is Fox out front. She's going to be tripped by Kennedy. And I don't think she ran over Kennedy that time. But nevertheless, it's a foul. Coach Trishman up giving direction. 64 54. 305 remaining. The Lady Raiders need a few turnovers. And a few quick threes to get back in this. The Hearts are a good shooting free throw team. They bring it across half court. Pressure by Froby out front. They jump over in the corner. That's Schaefer. They go back in the middle. Froby has it behind her back. She's going to drive. She gets it. We didn't have a number. She smartly pulls it back out. Now she picks up her dribble. Needs help. Oh, she throws the ball away. Good. Kennedy Lawling gets it. And there's Williams now out front. Shoot one, Queen. Put one up. Now look around, Froby, she puts up a bomb, a dagger. 64-57, 227 remaining. The Hearts inbound, pressure by the Railers. We need a turnover. They're taking their time. They're taking their time. They go cross-court pass. It's batted down court, and that yep. will be a turnover. Yep, so again, Lincoln not, uh, doesn't come up with a steal, but just pesky enough to uh, force Effingham to make a bad pass. And uh, 214 left, seven point uh, deficit. That is certainly not insurmountable here, especially the way Kaylin Proby is shooting right now. She has the last uh, seven points for Lincoln. They're going to cross half court. We're going to cross half court. Kaylin Proby crosses it. And uh, Coach Richmond said, let's get a timeout and let's talk things over because we're only down seven. 64 57. It's a 30 second timeout. We'll keep it right here. 64 57 with 207 remaining. And uh, the Lady Raiders have made a little bit of comeback. They got down by as many as 12, I believe, in that run. I wasn't even 14. Mm -hmm. I'm the one talking about it, and I can't even remember. <laughs> I know uh, they were down 11 at one point, 60 to 49. But uh, since then, they've uh, they outscored. Were, they've made a run here. Four, so I'd like to have uh, one more thank you out there. I already mentioned him, but uh, State Farm agent Adam Osborne and Country Fine Angel agent Joe Ryan. Got our thank yous out there. And uh, how about a big thank you to the Lady Raiders when they wrap this thing up, come back from uh, down seven with two minutes to go and win this. Like, yeah, how absolutely. about that big thank you? That, that would be perfectly acceptable here. Lincoln uh, starting to heat up from the outside. As we said, Effingham shot lights out in the third quarter, so you would think the odds are that they won't keep shooting that way. This is Froby from the corner. Oh, off the iron, no good. And we get the rebound. Didn't get it. Good defense by the Raiders. This is Fox. She's done an excellent job all day to Fear Day. They jump it way over the corner to Carl. Carl comes back out front to Fox, and we're going to have to foul. It, it, this is Fox dribbling, and they are spreading the court, and we're yep. going to have to foul. They're just going to run the clock out. Looking like uh, North Carolina with the four corners offense now. Yeah, there's nobody uh, inside the free throw line. They're just throwing the ball around out front. They lead by seven. There's the foul. This is going to send <clears throat> Miranda. Fox 
to the line. Yeah, soft five six sophomore ball handler. She squats, puts it up, hits it. 65-57. She gives some traffic. Coach Schaefer's got his hands up, telling everybody what to do. Second one is up. Beautiful. Puts it down. 66-57. Williams inbounds to Froby. <coughs> Froby picks it up, crosses half court. Fakes the three. Puts a dribble up. Now she needs help. They come over. Morgan helps. You have to shoot that, Morgan. Up to Kennedy. Kennedy looks around to Froby. Froby's going to throw one up. Wham! Wow, that was a long way out, too. Nice shot. 66, 61, 20 remaining. We got a foul. Oh, gosh, here we go. We'll let her go into the court. Fox stops. We're at 112. We're out front. This is Fear Day. They're going to come out and get Fear Day, and they do. A foul's on Kennedy. 108 remaining in the contest. The Lady Railers trail 66, 60. And we need a, we need a missed free throw. Yeah, 101 right here for... Uh, Miss Fear Day, and she's a good basketball player. First one rolls around, no good, but I'll tell you what, Myers got the board and put it right back up and in. Wow. 68-60. Kimmy brings it down, gets it to Williams, and a timeout by the Lady Rose with 56.5 seconds left. The Lady Rose take a timeout, and I'll tell you what, that was huge. It's a full timeout. Yeah, uh, we'll keep it right here, Lloyd. Let's talk a little bit about what's going on. I tell you what, the uh, that was huge. We we got the foul. We got her the free throw line. She missed it, and credit Shelby Myers with a huge rebound, puts it right back up and in, and that was a dagger. Yeah, you uh, you called it. We needed the missed free throw. We got it, but uh, unfortunately Myers able to sneak inside and score her 11th point of the game, and uh, Lincoln down eight. Just under a minute left, so that's a three-possession game at this point. Um, yeah, certainly, again, not insurmountable by any means, especially the way uh, Lincoln can shoot from the outside. But uh, you mentioned it earlier, we need to get rebounds, we need to get turnovers with our press. And it's fine if we uh, score here, but it doesn't do as much good if we let Effingham get the ball down the floor, but a lot of time run off the clock. So, uh, as big as the offense is here, defense just as important. Here we go, Kennedy inbounds to Williams. Williams looks around, goes right back to Kennedy, to Williams. Come up and shoot it, Queen. Froby has it. Froby wants to drive. She's going to drive all the way inside. Scoop! Frito scoop, and it won't go. Bounces around. She did get the foul. Uh, she's going to go to the free throw line. 68-60. That's uh, number four on Shelby Myers. I don't think that uh, that's a problem for them right now unless we can get this thing in overtime. No, absolutely not. 48 seconds left. Froby's first one. Up and good. It's the first from 68-61. And uh, tell you what, he must be worried about it. He's going to bring Shelby Myers yeah. out. Probably going to do offense for defense here. Uh, but uh, hopefully Froby hits this one. And then if Lincoln can't get the steal right away, get a quick foul before too much time Froby goes off the, the clock. Second. 68-62, they inbound. They the swarm right over on the corner. And they get a time. No, they yes, timeout. Call a timeout. Yeah, I was gonna say, save the foul right there. I'll tell you what, Carson Fearday is a good ball player too. Only a sophomore. She uh, called the timeout very quickly. And uh, it's a full timeout. Lloyd, you want to send it back to the station and we'll hear from one of our sponsors and we'll be right back. Experience outstanding at Lincoln College. Our dedicated faculty and staff get to know you and what will help you succeed on a personal level. I don't feel that it's work. You get up every morning, I get to come to work, I get to see the kids, and it's not a job. You know, it really doesn't feel like one. We really do enjoy our work. It's really worthwhile. It never gets old to see people realize that they can be who they want to be. Come find out what it means to be outstanding at Lincoln College. Joe Ryan, Lloyd Kirby, LT, back here in Taylorville. The Lady Raiders trail 68-62. 45.2 seconds remaining in the contest. Uh, this is a pretty good Flaming Hearts team. The Lady Raiders are uh, they're giving them everything right now. We need another turnover and a quick three. Yep, once again, quick pressure on the inbound pass. If they get it, if they don't get a steal, then foul immediately. And they foul immediately as they throw the ball inside. This is Miranda, Miranda Fox, 5'6 sophomore. 
She's had an excellent ball game. Handled the ball well, handled the ball well, ran the offense well. She is doing a lot of things right. And now uh, Coach Schaefer brings Shelly Myers back in to get a rebound. And with 43.5 seconds left, here comes Miss Fox. Her first one is up, and it's good. Interesting strategy by uh, by Eppingham as they bring in Myers on defense when she has four fouls. I guess uh, Coach Schaefer thinks she's more important on the defense again than on offense. There's the ball. She misses. That's just what we want. Now let's get the ball to court. 69-62. Kennedy Lowling brings it up court. Looks around. We got to move. We got to move. We might have to shoot that one. And Coach Trissy's going to have to have a timeout. We got it. We brought, we brought the ball back down the other end of the court. 34 seconds left in the game. And Coach Richardson called a timeout. We didn't have anywhere to go with it. We couldn't waste any more time. And uh, she's going to have to take a full timeout. And we'll keep it right here, Lloyd. You uh, you have some updates right there for us on uh, on anything. <laughs> <laughs> on well, your well-being. On my well-being? Uh, not too bad, thanks. How are you doing? Well, I'm doing real well. I'll tell you that the, you don't think about those little fouls, how important it is until, you, you know, right when it's happening. But uh, it, we got the we had the fouls called on us early in this game, and it really took away some of our aggressiveness uh, with our press. And that allowed, you know, the, the Flaming Hearts to get the ball, you know, up the court uh, more easily than it should have. And that created problems for us on defense. And uh, the fouls called early on us have really, I think, set the tone for the game. Yeah, absolutely. I think it got in the Lady Railers' heads a little bit that, oh, I don't want to get a foul, so I better not maybe go after this loose ball as hard or try and pressure the guard as hard trying to get a steal. Um, and it's, you know, it, that is just the way it's been called, and the uh, team has to adjust. There we go, 34 seconds. We look to inbound. And we do. This is Williams. She gets it over to Kennedy. Kennedy pulls up a three. It's going to be short. Is that going to be out of bounds on ours? Did they touch it? Nope. She missed it. The ball is going to go out of bounds. And they quickly make a substitution. They're going to bring in Bria Barr. And Myers is going to sit. And with 28 seconds remaining, the Flaming Hearts are going to inbound. They lead by seven. They go quickly to Fox in the middle. Fox looks around. Now she gets the ball back over to Fear Day. Fear Day crosses half court. She's moving people out of the way. Williams comes over and gets some pressure on her. She's going to be whistled for the foul. 18.5 seconds remaining. And the Lady Raiders trail 69-62. That is the 10th Lady Raider foul, so all, including this one, all future fouls will be two shots from the free throw line and the double bonus. Carson Fearday, only a sophomore, steps to the line, boom. It's a good basketball team. Yep, very good, and uh, as much as Coach Schaefer did not uh, like their free throw shooting after the Southeast game, he's got to be pleased with them tonight from the line because they, uh, they have responded. And the second free throw up and off, no good. Rebound down to Morgan. Morgan gets the Froby. Froby crosses half court. Stops. Oh, she's going to drive all the way to the hoop now. Nice bounce pass inside. Bossingham puts it in. 70-64. They inbound the ball with five seconds left. This is Fearday. They come down to foul. Something, nothing in the corner. No call. The clock is going to run out. The stripes are going to run off the floor. And the Lady Raiders have just lost the regional championship. 70, 64 to the Effingham Flaming Hearts. The, uh, I tell you what, it's a good basketball team. I'm yep. willing to say that. Yep, very good. They uh, improved now to 26 and four, and you don't have a 26 win season if uh, you don't have some talent and respond in the big games. And that's certainly what Effingham did here tonight. We're going to send it back to the station for uh, two or three minutes. Let you hear from our sponsors, and we'll bring it back. And we'll have and welcome back to Taylorville Gymnasium. The Lady Raiders have just suffered a uh, season-ending regional championship defeat to the Effingham Flaming Hearts, 70 to 64, in in what really was uh, a hard-fought battle. I'll tell you what; these were two pretty good basketball teams. Uh, I, I really, I I think the Flaming Hearts are very uh, they're teams just like us. They've got some uh, a bunch of scrapping players out there and then they have some size inside a little bit 
They handled the ball well. They shot free throws well, and they were red hot from the three-point arc. And you know that any team, when you're hot from three points, uh, from the three-point line, you're going to win some ball games, and they were tonight. Lloyd's adding up the stats, and he's going to get those to us. But uh, I will guarantee you they shot uh, well over 60% tonight for the game. And any time you do that, you're going to win. I will give you a little update on the uh, boys, the uh, Redder boys night. They do lead SHG 31-17 at halftime. Uh, thank you, Joel, for shipping that our way so that uh, we know that score. Um, as you talk about this game, uh, you know, the, the Raiders are going to lose a couple of seniors here. You know, uh, Haley the Queen Williams, she's uh, a senior and will be without her uh, services next year. And we're also uh, be losing Lauren Block. And I'm sure that everyone knows the Blocks. We're going to lose her. And we also will uh, lose Miss Anna Seeloff. Um, and a, a manager on the team along with Hillary Lucas. And uh, we've talked to uh, Coach Richmond before about how valuable those, uh, those girls are to a team. You, you have to have help with all that organizational stuff. And uh, those are just the girls to do it. I know uh, Anna Seeloff plans on attending Concordia University in Chicago next year. She's going to major in history and hopes to become a uh, museum curator. She's on the track and field team. She's going to throw a shot, put in the hammer this year. Um, and she loved it when, SA, when they beat SAC in the double overtime, which was a very fun game. And then uh, also beating Rochester last year in sectionals. Uh, but Lauren Block is actually going to uh, go to Parkland. She's going to be on softball scholarship and go into the nursing program. And uh, her favorite memory was uh, beating Rochester in those sectionals. And uh, Haley Williams is going to uh, head on to college. She's going to study pre-veterinary medicine. And uh, her basketball uh, <laughs> moments is when uh, they uh, beat SHG in the double overtime game also. That's going to uh, Lloyd's added some things up over here if you're wondering why I'm babbling. And uh, I can babble about a lot of things. You're doing a great job, though. Yeah, I thought I was. I'm, first of all, before Lloyd gets on here, we're going to give our, our credit you know, to these uh, Flaming Hearts. There'll be a, uh, a future CS8 opponent next year. And I'll tell you what, they, I'm sorry, I said CS8. You did. Yeah. Apollo Conference, I'm sorry. Future Apollo <laughs> Conference. Uh, opponent, and I tell you what, they're going to be strong. Uh, Carson Fearday, uh, she's a sophomore. She was, she's an excellent ball player. Allie Armstrong hit a lot of threes. She's only a junior. Miranda Fox ran the whole show out there on the offense. She's only a sophomore. Bria Barr uh, down the paint. She's only a junior. And then Shelby Myers in the paint that had big boards and hit free throws. She's only a junior, so. I got to tell you what, right now, that looks like to uh, be one of the strongest teams in the Apollo next year. That is the Effingham Flaming Hearts. They will move on and head over into the Decatur, which I believe they will play Mattoon. That is correct. They will, play, they will play Mattoon Monday night at 7.30. Um, there were um, four teams that will advance to the sectional there at Decatur. Um, and that second, that will be the second game as Mattoon uh, advanced, and uh, that is who. <coughs> excuse me, that is who uh, Effingham will play. And the other game, uh, the earlier game that night, will be at six o'clock at Decatur MacArthur. That will be with the Rockets of Rochester, who are still rolling in the postseason. They will take on Paris at six p.m. and then Mattoon will face. Um, Effingham, that will be at 7.30, uh, as I uh, said, over at uh, MacArthur Is Indicator. it Mattoon or Mattoon? I think it depends on... Tomato, tomato. Yeah, where you're, where Mattoon, you're from. Mattoon, Mattoon. Mattoon, Mattoon. Send us your thoughts. <laughs> they can tweet you that, can't they? Uh, yeah, tweet that to me and I'll get right back with you. <laughs> um, we are uh, awaiting Coach Richmond. Uh, you know, a lot of... Coaches don't like to talk about these tough losses afterwards. I, I'm not sure if she's going to join us or not. Uh, Lloyd, have you got these uh, stats well, ready for Well, they're very close. They're closer than they were a minute ago. So, um, again, we'll emphasize these are the unofficial scoring totals. Um, Lincoln uh, is defeated by Effingham 70-64. to 64. And uh, on the Lincoln side of the ledger, they were led by Kaylin Froby. She had 
29 points or in the neighborhood of 29 points um, <laughs> and uh, she had five two pointers five three pointers and then four or four from the free throw line again a solid night for her uh, she was followed by Kennedy Lolling and Morgan Lolling as uh, they each tallied 10 points um, Leah Schneider had nine points for Lincoln Haley Williams added a pair and Grace Bossingham uh, added a pair in the first quarter so um, that was the scoring for Lincoln over on the Effingham side um, fairly balanced scoring lots of three-pointers as we mentioned uh, looks like they had a total of 12 three-pointers in the game altogether um, they were led by Allie Armstrong with 17 points she had five three-pointers including three in the third quarter um, she was followed next by Carson Fearday. 15 points for Carson. Um, 4 of 7 shooting from the free throw line. Shelby Myers added 11 points. Definitely was a presence down low for Effingham. And uh, she was followed by Miranda Fox with 9 points. Natalie Carl had 9 points, all coming on uh, three three-pointers. Sydney Webster added 6 points. Both of her... Uh, three-pointer getting all of her points coming on two three-pointers and uh, rounding out the scoring Skyler Schaefer had two points and Rhea Shaw added one point so um, total is 70 for Effingham 64 for Lincoln and uh, as we s have said throughout the season the third quarter kind of a Achilles heel for Lincoln um, the score was tied 30-30 at halftime but in that third quarter Effingham outscored Lincoln 22 to 12 to take a 52-42 lead at that point at the end of the third quarter Lincoln actually outscored uh, Effingham 22-18 in the final quarter but uh, Unfortunately, not quite enough as the uh, they ran out of time and Effingham comes away with the victory. Yeah, and again, you know, I know we're going to talk to uh, Coach Richmond when she gets out here, but uh, the, the, the early foul set the tone. It took away our aggressiveness. We weren't able to have the, the ball press work as effectively as it has in the past. And, and I'm not taking anything away uh, from Effingham because obviously it, that's a good ball club, and, and they were able to handle our pressure, and they, they moved the ball real well. They shot the, the ball well, and uh, they're going to move on. And, and actually, uh, I'll tell you what, that's, they're a good basketball team. Yeah, so absolutely. Like we said, you don't uh, get 25 or now 26 wins on a season, and uh, you can't do that without some talent. So uh, hats off to the Effingham uh, Flaming Hearts. and. We can uh, go ahead and take a little time out here waiting for Coach Richmond. I'm sure it's, uh, like you said, not a not a pleasant, uh, no, pleasant it's locker room. It's a tough room. night being the last, you know, the last game, and it's your loss, so she's probably going to be a little extra time there. I thought we might send it back to the, to the studio. We can do that. Part of your laptop. <laughs> and uh, we'll take, uh, we'll, we'll hear from uh, some of our sponsors. We'll go a couple more minutes, see if Coach Richmond uh, makes it out. Stay with Welcome back, Redder fans. Joe Ryan and Lloyd Kirby. And we are still at Taylorville Gymnasium. The Lady Raiders a tough loss tonight, 70-64. And we're joined by Coach Richmond. And Coach, these are always a tough one, aren't they? These are the tough ones. These are the tough ones. Yeah. The uh, We talked earlier about the, we think the turning point of the whole game were the early fouls. It, 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 I mean, those are some ticky-tack fouls. I don't want to go on the stripes too much, but I can. You know, the some ticky-tack fouls out front, and all of a sudden we can't be as aggressive as we want to be on on our full court press and actually even driving to the basket and that's good good that's that's what we were looking for and so the first quarter we're all tied up or close mm -hmm. i mean we have a lead we've played well in the first quarter um we get into the second quarter uh, again a, a, a great aggressive game we did some good things and and go into halftime tied up at 30 and that and right then it's anybody's ball game absolutely i thought uh when we went into the third quarter then boy did they get hot the, you they know, did. It felt like they threes. didn't miss. They didn't miss. Yeah, the threes were unbelievable. It was. It was a great night for them. They shot the ball very well. And, I mean, we were out there, and they were still, I mean, they made everything. They didn't miss. Um, I thought we played hard. I thought we played well. They shot the lights out of the basket, and sometimes teams are going to have nights like that where they just make everything, and tonight was their night. Well, it was like the boys against Lanfear. You know, yeah. When we played Lanfear, we was bombs away and everything went down and we could have beaten anyone that night. Absolutely. And, I, and these guys kind of had the same thing going on tonight. Not taking anything away from them, I, I can't believe that they shoot like that all the time. 
but I will say that tonight they were hot, and, and that's a good ball club. You know, they had, uh, you know, uh, the Fox is a, little, a good little ball hunter out front. Yeah. Um, I know that Shelby inside, Shelby Myers inside did a good job, um, and and they, so it's a good, that's a good team. Yes. They, they got beaten on. Uh, the, the key to the whole thing, though, I think, was uh, our foul trouble, and then they couldn't miss. They couldn't miss. So the, uh, on our side of the ball, though, I thought we had an outstanding game again from several players that did all the little things right. Uh, you, you just can't be as aggressive, though, when you're, when you're worried about foul trouble. I agree. We, um, I thought we moved the ball well. I thought we shot the ball well. Um, we attacked well. I don't, I, don't I, I do, you know, like sometimes those calls, you know, you, you get a little bit nervous about attacking or doing something because you, you feel like... You can't. It looks but like hands off. Yeah, <laughs> and um, but I, I still I thought we played well. I just tonight they were the better team, and it, and it was no fault of I don't believe of anything we did wrong or oh, anything. I, I thought we played a great game. The kids played hard. Um, they played as a team, and they did what we asked them to do, and they did it well. It just unfortunately just fell a few points short. I was going to say to really to only get beaten by six when they shot like they did. Absolutely, we played well. Absolutely. The. Uh, I don't know what it is, what percentage, but I'm sure we can find it in the paper tomorrow. But it's over 60%. I, I mean, agree. I mean, oh, yeah, it was absolutely. unbelievable. That's what I said, yeah. And then they're a very good free throw shooting yeah. team, too. They mm -hmm. get the free throws, too. So, uh, that, like I say, that's a that's a good basketball team. And really, as well as they played, and we were still, I mean, to only get beaten by six, yep. we played a good game. We did. The uh, So, uh, a tough locker room, then. You know, you get in there, you got some seniors their last games, and... And all that, and, and now a long bus ride home. Yep. But you know what? You, you have to say we had an, an excellent season this year. Um, it, the future is going to be bright. I did just talk about these guys. They're all back. Yeah. All the starters are back for Effingham. Yep. So I think we probably have started an instant rivalry here today. Nestle's probably. quick because we're going to stir that up and mix up that chocolate or strawberry milk. And next year, these girls aren't going to forget this loss. No, they they're, won't. They're going to be ready for it because, again, we're only going to lose two girls. Absolutely. And, and those guys are going to bring back every starter on that team. It's well, incredible. Coach. It's a good team. It's a young team. They'll be good for a little while. Yep. But, you know, uh, anytime you shoot like that, you're going to win some games. Absolutely. I um, I watched three films on them. I saw them live, and tonight was the best I've ever seen them shoot. So. And it was it everyone. Was, it, it wasn't was like everyone. one girl was hot. You know, we knew 22 could shoot the ball. Um, we were kind of keen on her. Three's a good attacker, so we knew that about her. But I... Then all of a yeah, sudden, this, this 12, Natalie Carl hit. Yep. Uh, I think Sydney Webster got into the mix. Mm -hmm. uh, she hit some threes. Yeah, Armstrong hit the ones. And, uh, and of course, I, you know, I was very impressed with uh, Miranda Fox, who handled the ball out front and got things going all mm -hmm. the time. Uh, but I always say, you know, it, it, it's, it's getting, it's losing the teams that you don't think were very good are the ones that that aggravates you. That's they, a good basketball they, team. They I are like a good losing, but that's a good team. basketball yep, team. Yep, they are a good basketball team. Absolutely. So the, uh, well, you, 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 you swallow this one and you take a long bus ride home and you, and you, I guess you take a little break and then you start getting ready for next year, right? Yep. Back to the drawing board. Back, Back to, work. to the drawing board. That's it. Well, Coach, I want to congratulate you. An excellent run. Thank Ran into a team tonight that couldn't miss. And that's what's going to happen in these games, yep. you know? Happens ever all the time, but uh, congratulations Absolutely. on an excellent season. Thanks. And uh, thanks for coming in and joining us. We know this is never easy, and we're looking forward to next year. We'll all be ready to go. Yeah, absolutely. Sounds good. <laughs> all right. Thank you. And so for uh, Joe Ryan, Lloyd Kirby, LT, working the camera, we'd like to thank you guys for listening. This has been Lady Raider Basketball, and we will see you next year. Lincoln Lady Railer Basketball on WLCN 96.3 FM and streaming live at WLCNOnline.com is brought to you by Grau Incorporated, Community Action Partnership of Central Illinois, Memorial Sports Care at Abraham Lincoln Memorial Hospital, State Farm Agent Adam Osborne, Lincoln Heating and Cooling, Connect Construction, Joe Ryan, Country Financial, Chicago Street Rentals, Logan County Sheriff, Steve Nichols, and by the Holiday Inn Express of Lincoln.